Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna go over the 28A1 Ferno Stretcher, or Cot, and it's different than the 28A. All right, we're gonna go over the differences, we're gonna review some information for the crew, and then we're gonna also review information that maintenance needs to know about. Since a lot of us are getting the new stretcher, there's some information that people need to be aware of. Just cautions, all right? All right, let's go over it. Well, the first good thing to know is that there's a user manual for this 28A1 series. They call it Roll-In Cot. If I can figure it out, I'll put it in a shared document in the description. I recommend all the crew review this. And in the back, they have a training record. Training, that's cool. There's a lot of good information in this user's manual. Take a look at it. Bruno also tells us what the difference is between a 28A and a 28A1. Briefly, the differences are the wheels are different. They, the 28A1 has locking wheels and they're a little bit wider. They also have a different sidearm. It slides down, kind of. It doesn't fold out. Also, the headrests are different. Also, a good note is Bruno says that the weight of the old stretcher is 62 pounds and the weight of the new stretcher is 70 pounds. I don't know if that's 100% accurate or not, but that's about a gallon of jet fuel. So one thing that you're going to notice if you're part of the crew is that there's really no leg room, okay? So you can't put your legs where you used to. You're going to have to put your legs a little bit to the side of the head of the patient or of the head of the stretcher. Sorry about that. That's just the way it is. Another thing you're going to need to be aware of is the clamshell door hits the back left wheel of the stretcher. It's just a little bit, but eventually it's going to wear out that cargo net back there. No worries. Another thing that the crew needs to know is that be aware of the, the straps and the extra length of the straps. Just don't let them hang out there. If they hang out like this one is here, it will get caught underneath the wheel and it will get drug across the floor. And the back of the floor is really rough and those straps are going to get worn out real quick. And your mechanic is going to have to replace it on the next 100 hour. All right. So just be aware. Try, not, try to wrap up those. Try to make sure they just don't dangle off the side. I know it's hard to do and you got more important things to do, like take care of a patient, but... Just do what you can, all right? Another important thing about this new stretcher, they call it a finger guard. It's this black piece on the side. If you have this stretcher right next to, say, a hospital bed or another ambulance stretcher, one that moves up and down, and you have to move the other stretcher up or the bed up, it will contact the bottom of this finger guard right here, and it will curl it in. You won't realize it until you try to pull the stretcher back out of the helicopter. But what happens is once you put the stretcher into the helicopter, the front legs, when they swivel up, they'll get behind the curled piece of the finger guard. So when you go pull the stretcher out of the helicopter, the legs won't drop down. They'll be stuck. So just be aware of that. Just be careful when you're next to a stretcher that moves up and down or a hospital bed. Make sure that you have some distance there before you move it up and down. All right, just be careful of that. Another important thing you need to be aware of, it doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it could be really bad. Your stretcher can get stuck in the aircraft because of this. So right here, the stretcher, of course, is on the end, so you can get a good view of it. But if you're pushing the stretcher through a field or something, and you're having a bunch of firefighters help you or something like that, just make sure that they don't put their hand right here where this guy's putting his hand. If they grab that cable, this cable releases the lock. But if you grab this cable right now, it will make the lock jump the cam and it will get stuck and it, there'd be no tension on the cable to be able to unlock it after that all right there's a whole video i made on that and i'll i'll put a link at the end of the video on this so just be careful don't let anybody put their hands underneath there all right just watch out for that that's pretty much all the information that the crew needs to know the rest is going to be for maintenance all right so for maintenance if your helicopter jumps the cam which like i said is rare it's, uh, you need to get a long screwdriver, like you won't know it, it'll be in the aircraft. So you need to get a long screwdriver, see where this is right here on this video. You can get leverage on that bar there with your screwdriver and just pry it up and rotate it so that the red lines line back up again, all right? Another thing that you're going to want to do if you're upgrading to the new 28A1 is you're gonna need to be aware on the back left panel is gonna get wrecked. Okay, if you don't have a Kydex plastic piece that has an extended part that curves around the edge of the panel like this one here, then you're probably going to want to get one of those on order 
the um the old ones that aren't curved over that's the old style metro the new style metro panel they'll send this like this i've also seen a piece that's made out of stainless steel that curves around and that's pretty sweet piece right there and it's screwed on it's not riveted on and i don't see why there'd be any problems with that considering there's already a stainless steel piece straight from metro for the front panel right here so i don't know so just be aware that that panel is going to get destroyed so where the panel meet, meets that corner if you just put a couple pieces of blade tape right there you just stack up two pieces or three or four or ten or twenty whatever you want to do man but look blade tape is cheap and it will save your panel from getting wrecked right at the end so i don't know just keep that in mind we've got rolls of blade tape that are lying around why not just use a little bit of it nothing wrong with that right so that's the back panel but the front panel on this aircraft there's rubber but if you take a close look on the top rubber you see those big scratch scratch marks those big scratch marks yeah, if those pieces of rubber weren't there to protect the panel, that panel would get destroyed. And that's from the side arm, one of the screws in the side arm hitting, I think. Also on the bottom, the bottom part of the panel will get destroyed as well. I'm not sure which part of the stretcher hits that. It might be the leg braces, something like that. But go ahead and get an eighth inch thick rubber, the same rubber that we use for the clamshell door switch. And... You could hold it on with Loctite 495, which is pretty much super glue. Your call, save your panels. Just giving you a heads up that the front panels are going to get wrecked also. Another thing you're going to want to look at. Look, when you first get the stretcher, the 28A1, go ahead and order two of these wheels. Because these wheels lock, and if your crew is not used to the wheels being locked, and they go ahead and push it, it's going to grind a flat spot on your wheel, and then it's going to be like a bad shopping cart. It's just going to be like bump, 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 bump. You know what I'm talking about, okay? Also, the inside of these wheels, the hubs of these wheels, is made out of plastic, but the bearing is made out of, obviously, steel. So right where the bearing is, after time, the plastic part will have cracks in it. So just keep an eye on that. Like, take a look at that on your 100-hour. Uh, that's not going to happen overnight, but you'll see hairline cracks in there, and then... Let's go ahead and order another wheel. So the locking wheel assembly is, the part number for that is 152-5794, but there's also a new part number that isn't on Ferno's drawing. It's 152-6951, and that's for the locking wheel assembly. That's for the wheel, the bearings, the bolt that holds it together, and the whole, the whole caster piece. For the wheel that doesn't pivot, it's just a, the regular wheel. There's bearings in there and spacers and stuff. The part number for that wheel is 270-8038, and I'm pretty sure it's the same wheel, the same wheel and hub assembly. Also in this drawing, you can order the bearings and stuff. If you just order that wheel, it won't come with those bearings. Just a heads up, get a hold of this drawing. Another thing, if you're going to be the mechanic for this, you're going to want to keep an eye on the armrests. So the way these armrests operate is there's a lock. You just grab it, and it unlocks it, and you could lift it up and down. It kind of slides up and down, but there's, there's three screws on the outside, three screws on the inside, and there's like a threaded insert that holds both sides of those screws together. You're going to want to keep an eye out for those screws. They're going to get loose and fall out. The part number for those screws is 335-2319, and it's held on with blue Loctite 242. Just keep an eye on those screws. So just a heads up, if you see one that fell out or is loose, tight, you know, put some Loctite on it and snug it back up. Another thing you're going to want to pay attention to is this countersunk screw, this really big one. Check it on your 100 hour and just make sure it's tight. Also, if it's loose, take it out, put some Loctite on it. That's also in the drawing. Another thing that you're going to want to take a look at also on your 100 hour, when you tip over the stretcher to look at the mount, that's the front side of the mount. There's a cap screw that I found missing in the past or loose. Again, if it's loose, throw some Loctite on there. That's also in the drawing. All right, just keep an eye out for that. At the very end of the user's guide for the stretcher from Ferno, it goes without saying, but I guess let's just say it, okay? It says, once the cot is installed in an aircraft, it becomes part of the aircraft and should only be serviced and or repaired by aircraft mechanics. Ferno Aviation supplies all the parts directly to the operator, so, so obviously... Follow the STC, which is from Metro. 
So there's a handful of drawings. There's also this manual and some other things, but just reach out to the other guys or somebody else who already has this or who has had this stretcher for a while if you need the drawings, okay? But other than that, it's a pretty good stretcher. My crew has had it since they opened this base in 2010, and they don't know any different, all right? It's a lot sturdier than the other one. Anyway, I just wanted to go over some quick things that everybody needs to know about. The crew, also maintenance. Just a heads up. I hope it helps. All right, that's it for this short video. I hope you guys found some value in this video. And if you did, share it with some other guys who can use this information. All right, appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.